Hey kiddos, last time we looked at cones in part one and cylinders and now we're going to look at square base pyramids and we're going to be looking at the surface area of a square base pyramid which is one half LP plus big B. L represents this line here. Okay, it's L. It even says L right there. B represents, as you can see in the corner, the area of the base. So the area, which is the square bottom, and then P represents the perimeter. Remember, perimeter is as if you're building a fence. So you're going to go all the way around your square base pyramid as if you're building a fence. So let's go ahead and write that formula down. Surface area of a square base pyramid is one half L P plus big B. Okay. Now let's start solving this. Okay. So let's first off identify what is L. In this case, L is your slant height. As you can see, it's not the up and down line. It's the line that goes aside, alongside the triangle. So in this case, L is 7.3. What is P? Well, P stands for perimeter. So, perimeter is as if you're building a fence around the bottom. Okay, You've got four there. Right there, that's another four. That's another four. And then this is your final four. So your perimeter is 16. Okay. And now let's find out what the big B is, which is the area. So you take 4 squared, or 4 times 4, length times width. And in this rare case, perimeter and base happen to be the same. That's not usual. So 1 half times 7.3 times 16 plus the big B stands for 16. Let's go ahead and put that in our calculator and solve. Okay. 1 divided by 2 times 7.3 times 16 equals 58.4. And 58.4 plus 16 gives me 74.4. That is the surface area is if you are uh, wrapping the surface of the pyramid up. Okay, Right there in the center of the circle, draw a little smiley face. That's your indicator that you're watching the video. Now, for this particular pyramid, or L, is 7.8. Our P would be that 10, 10, 10, and 10. So, four tens, which is 40. And our big B area, little b is just the line. Little b would just be that. But the area is length times width, 10 times 10 which is 100. So let's go ahead and put that into our formula. We have 1 half times 7.8 times 40 plus 100. And let's calculate it, okay? 1 divided by 2 times 7.8 times 40 gives me 156. And if I add 100 to that, I get 200. Now we're going to be looking at the volume of a square base pyramid. And so I want you to underline the word of right there so that we know that you're paying attention to the video. Okay, volume is one third times big B times height. Height you always measure up and down. You don't stand sideways to measure your height, you know what I mean? So height is the line that goes up and down from the top of the pyramid all the way to the center, okay? And big B, remember, is the area of the bottom, okay? Think of B as the bottom of the shape, right? So volume is one-third big B little h, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, label these. H is three, it's that up and down line. And big B is that five times five, okay? Which is 25. So one-third 
times 25 times 3. Let's see what that is. 1 divided by 3 times 25 times 3 equals 25. That's the volume, how much you could fill if you were moving it. In this case, our H up and down line is 10. And our base is 6 times 6. That's 6 times that's 6, which is 36. 1 third times 36 stands for B times our H, which is 10. Put that in. 1 divided by 3 times 36 times 10 gives us a grand total of 120. Okay, and I want you to double circle that, okay? Now, they also want you to be able to understand what they call changing attributes of rectangular prisms and, and whatnot. If you change, this is a rectangular prism, by the way, it's a box prisms of box, okay? Um, like shoe box, uh, box of instant oatmeal, uh, um, cheese, you know, like a block of cheese or something. It's a block, okay? And so we have volume and surface area formulas, okay? So the first one wants to know surface area, okay? So we're going to write down that formula. 2LW plus 2LH plus 2WH and solve for surface area. And let's go ahead and substitute the original information. Two times our length is four, L stands for length, and our width is three, plus two times our length is four, our height is 6, plus 2 times our width is 3, and our height is 6. And we're going to solve each one of these, little, and, then, and then add them together. 2 times 4 is 8, times 3 is 24, plus 2 times 4 is 12, times 6 is uh, that's 48. Let's double check. And 2 times 3 is 6, times 6 is 36. And if I add all those together, I get 108. But what happens if the height is tripled? So instead of 6, I times it by 3, and the height is now 18. Okay, let's look at how this will change the shape. So 2 times 4 times 3 plus 2 times our length is 4, but our new height is 18, plus 2 times our width is still 3, but our new height is 18. Okay. This is still 24. Okay. This is 144. And this is 108. So if we add all those together, we now have 276. And 276 minus 108 shows us that our height, in, uh, our uh, surface area is increased by 168. Okay? Now, volume is a lot more simple, okay? The volume of this is length times width times height of a prism. They'll probably show you the visual, okay? So, volume is length times width that's height. So that's going to be 3, 5, times 3, times 9. Any order you can change it up due to the commutative property. The C and O stand for change order. So you can write it 3 times 9 times 5, 5 times 3 times 9, 3 times 9, whatever. Okay. And what you get there is 135. If you double the height, so instead of the height being 3, it's now 6. And do the same thing. It's 270. And 
And what's happened here is this is, it's doubled, okay? If you tripled the height, or tripled the length, or tripled the width, the whole volume would triple as well. If you increase the height 16 times, the volume would also increase 16 times. So, you know, always plug it in and, and kind of see. You, you know it's doubled because 270 uh, divided by um, 2 is 135. It's, real, it's literally doubled this way. So now I want you to go online and take Hobbage slash Gershon surface area and volume uh, quiz. I want to make sure that you guys are doing well on this. This was another area that was a little bit rocky. The biggest part is some square-based pyramids. I take this home and study it like the Dickens, okay? You all live it up. Um, you may uh, keep the sheet. Don't turn this one in yet because you're going to need those formulas. Bye, kiddos.